Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin recently made history when it took a short trip to space. Blue Origin is among the top private space companies, coming as a close competitor with other companies like SpaceX. The competition between Blue Origin and SpaceX has been quite intense. Leaked documents reveal the complete truth behind Blue Origin's obsession with SpaceX. Welcome to Liftoff, your place where you can find everything space and often SpaceX. In today's video, we will dig in deep and analyze the secret notes of Blue Origin leaders trying to catch SpaceX. Stay tuned. The competition and the obsession with SpaceX goes years back. Back in 2018, Blue Origin's primary concern was not to fall behind Elon Musk's SpaceX. At least, that's what the leaked documents reveal. Blue Origin even hired management consultants to help figure out what they were doing wrong and how it could be improved. The consultants then gave a briefing to several Blue Origin leaders, and these notes were obtained by Ars Technica, revealing quite a lot of details. The alleged leaked documents from the Blue Origin executive reveals that the private space company was obsessed with finding the areas SpaceX was beating them. That included low-cost launches, design, and also talent acquisition. Based on these notes, one might assume that Blue Origin would chalk up a similar strategy to take on SpaceX. Moreover, rather than developing its departments, Blue Origin seemed to be more obsessed with SpaceX's strategy for success. The leaked notes even mentioned some key differences between SpaceX and Blue Origin, such as Customer focus The consultants identified SpaceX as having a strong emphasis on satisfying customers, seeking to provide desirable services at lower cost. They have a customer focus. We should too. In many cases, we view the customer as a nuisance. Unlike the Falcon 9, New Glenn has significantly greater performance than the existing geostationary satellite market demands. Was this design decision, they asked, responsive to customer demand? Avacent noted that the Falcon 9 rocket during the 2010s had captured a large share of the market to launch satellites to geostationary orbit. SpaceX did this by pricing its Falcon 9 rocket about 50% lower than the market leader in this area, the European launch company Ariane Space and its Ariane 5 rocket. One example demonstrated how important price was to customers. Before the mid-2010s, the Falcon 9 booster had significantly lower performance than the Ariane 5 rocket. In response to this, satellite companies increased the performance of their satellites on board propulsion to reach their desired orbits. That allowed satellite operators to book a cheaper launch on the Falcon 9 rocket and shift more responsibility to the satellite's electric propulsion for orbit raising. Finding talents. The executives also grappled with SpaceX's ability to hire young engineers, get them to work long hours, and be high performers. The Avacent presentation found that young engineers viewed SpaceX as the Harvard of rocketry, and that helped SpaceX attract the best and the brightest students. SpaceX uses younger employees to great effect, an executive wrote. Blue is extremely picky with our intern and new grad programs, accepting only 1.7% of applicants. We could do better taking on more young people foster, knowing we may increase churn. The Blue Origin leaders also noted that Musk's vision for settling Mars has served to motivate his current employees and inspire future generations. Perhaps Blue Origin could do something similar with the moon, one executive suggested. Blue Origin should also reconsider how it compensates employees, some members of leadership said. SpaceX generally paid at or below market rates, but it offers employees private stock options that have historically risen to become a valuable part of compensation. Blue Origin, by contrast, paid higher salaries, but its options were worth much less. Getting the most out of talent SpaceX is known for pushing employees to work long hours. 80-hour work weeks to complete important projects are fairly common, whereas Blue Origin has a more relaxed work environment. Blue Origin employees are generally expected to work 40-hour weeks, but some of the members of leadership thought that they may need to change to reach the company's ambitious goals. Blue Origin is kind of lazy compared to SpaceX. I often work off hours and weekends, just the nature of the business. Blue is a ghost town on weekends, and I'm sure people are working, but I do think we have quite a bit of heroic high performers picking up the slack too often, another executive wrote, says the report.
Another executive expressed similar thoughts. We need to get more out of our employees. The, the lack of effort over weekends to meet deadlines is not a culture I am accustomed to in an operations outfit. I realize that development is somewhat different, but regardless, SpaceX expects to get more out of their employees. Vertical integration. According to Avacent, about 70% of SpaceX's vehicles are built in-house, with another 30% coming from traditional suppliers. One executive said that Blue Origin should develop a strategy to vertically integrate 70% or more of the GS2 scope as part of the Block 2 iteration. This refers to the second stage of the new Glenn rocket, and this idea has since morphed into Project Jarvis. This program, to develop a fully reusable second stage, has sought to emulate SpaceX's development program, including vertical integration. Iterative Design One senior leader expressed admiration for what SpaceX has accomplished through iterative design. They were able to implement the concept of iterative design and development in aerospace, which is something many companies talk about, but few achieve. This person wrote, I believe Blue could de-risk future developments through moving in this direction. The Blue Origin executives also noted how SpaceX embraces its failures and how its willingness to fail publicly has enchanted the space community. We should develop a campaign that gets the public and industry on our side, much like SpaceX has done with their transparency in mission failure, which has been an effective customer relations tactic to get the industry, customers, and public behind them, rooting for their success, an executive suggested. They are effectively saying it's okay to fail because that is how you innovate. Develop a strategy that focuses on highlighting our innovations and failures and how we are learning from that. Competition continues. The documents revealed by the publication dates back to 2018. From the looks of it, the briefing from the managing consultants didn't solve Blue Origin's problems. Over the past few years, SpaceX has continued to establish its dominance and is even a favored partner of NASA. Of course, Blue Origin came close in competition when Jeff Bezos and his crewmates took a trip to space. The space trip lasted about 10 minutes, where the new Shepard capsule included four members on board. The war between SpaceX and Blue Origin has continued. Recently, Jeff Bezos challenged NASA's decision to grant the moon land a contract to SpaceX. Ultimately, the briefing didn't solve the company's problems. The gap between SpaceX and Blue Origin is far wider now than it was in 2018. So either Blue Origin moved in the wrong direction, or SpaceX simply continued to outpace it. And that concludes today's episode. If you want to keep yourself updated on what will come next, subscribe and hit the notification button. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again.